Number one, he shouldn't have said what he said out loud. And number two, he probably should have made sure the recruits he was giving this pitch to didn't have their phones out and was recording him. And guess what? I'm going to make you feel my wrath in this video because y'all owe me, and more importantly, Nick Saban an apology. <laughs> oh man, oh man, would you look how the tables have turned. I find it so historically funny how only what, a month ago, everybody saying, oh Matt, you're only crying and complaining because Nick Saban, your daddy, he finally didn't get the number one recruiting class. You're just upset about it. Matt, what do you mean? Texas A&M? They didn't pay for their recruiting class. Have you ever thought that maybe your recruits would want to go there? I want to make this very, and I mean very clear. Just because I'm an Alabama fan and I take up for Nick Saban or I back him on a take, it doesn't mean I'm being a biased Alabama fan. Just because I say Alabama is the best team in the country, it doesn't mean I'm being biased. They just so happen to be the best team in the country, and I also just so happen to be a fan. Let me give you a better example. So I'm going to assume most of you know who Elon Musk is. He's a billionaire. And let's say, for example, I'm a huge Elon Musk fan. Well, let's say for the sake of this video, I look at you and say, hey, I think Elon Musk has a lot of money. Does that mean I'm being biased towards Elon Musk? No, it's a cold, hard fact. And guess what? I'm gonna make you feel my wrath in this video cause y'all owe me, and more importantly, Nick Saban an apology. Okay, I don't know why I said you owe me an apology, but for the people who didn't believe Saban, you owe him one. I'm not gonna let y'all forget about it. There was people on ESPN freaking saying that Nick Saban was being a crybaby. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me calm down cause I'm going to assume a bunch of you have no idea what I'm talking about. How do I say this? There's not an easy way to put this. Texas A&M just exposed themselves. And I don't mean like, oh, I think they got exposed. No, there is video footage. They got caught in 4K. Like literally, they got caught in 4K. I got the video clips to show you. There was a bunch of recruits on a visit and one of the assistant coaches literally said, y'all are gonna get a lot of money from the people behind these suites if you decide to come play here. <sighs> let me calm down, let me calm down. We've got a lot to talk about and go over. This is about to be a really, and I mean a really interesting video, and guess what? We're no longer on the road to 200K because we just hit it because of you guys. We've gained so many new subscribers in the past week, I can't thank you guys enough, and thank you so much to all the old subscribers who helped us get there and achieve this milestone. It means a lot to me. I don't want to be corny and whatnot. I think you guys, you know I appreciate you. I'm just humbled by you guys that you really enjoy watching the videos, and that makes making them 10 times better. Once again, thank you for all the support. Road to 300K. And now without further ado, let's get into it. No beating around the bush, none of that. Let's start it off hot. And just like this comment says, never question the king. I mean Caesar of football, hashtag Saban. I don't want to give you the entire backstory of what happened between Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban, but I'm going to give you a short one anyways because I know some people might not be informed. To make an extremely long story short, Nick Saban called out Jimbo Fisher and also Jackson State for illegally recruiting. Or not illegally recruiting, he stated that Texas A&M, they paid for their recruiting class, which they did. That caused a huge mess and storm, and we made plenty of videos talking about it. Jimbo Fisher was pissed off about it. He went on a huge rant and really disrespected Nick Saban. It was a full-out crap show, to say the least. I saw some people taking Jimbo's side, and also some people taking Saban's side. You had some people bashing Fisher. You had some people on ESPN calling Nick Saban a crybaby. Call it what you want, it is what it is. It's in the past. But right when it seemed like everybody was starting to forget about it, this guy right here you see on your screen, he just brought everything back up. You're probably sitting there wondering, yo Matt, who in the heck is this random dude I'm looking at? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, my friend, because this is an assistant recruiter for Texas A&M. And what he just did, I'm about to show you in the video clip, it was one of the biggest mistakes anyone could ever do. Number one, he shouldn't have said what he said out loud. And number two, he probably should have made sure the recruits he was giving this pitch to didn't have their phones out and was recording him. Let me give you some more context to the situation. He was being a tour guide for some of these four and five star recruits. And yeah, Matt wrote a clip. Y'all so, get a lot of money from these people behind the suites. Y'all decide to go play. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Did y'all hear that? He said, y'all getting a lot of money from the people behind these suites if you decide to come play here. I'll try to dump that down for you. That means these boosters at Texas a &M, they're going to pay these guys to come there. Whoa, 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 whoa,
Hold on, hold on. You're probably thinking I'm mad or pissed off about that, but I'm not. I told y'all ever since day one. I knew Texas A&M bought the recruiting class. That's not what I'm mad about. What I'm mad about is that Jimbo Fisher has lied about it. If you're gonna buy your recruiting class just like USC, Texas, and Ohio State, at least admit it. That's my biggest problem, and it was Nick Saban's biggest problem. Jimbo Fisher was trying to act like they just got that recruiting class because kids actually want to go to Texas a &M. When in reality, anybody with a 0.24 IQ could understand there's no reason for Texas to have a number one recruiting class and get seven five-star recruits. Why is there no reason? It's simple. They don't compete for championships, and they go 8-4 and four every single year, except for that one year they went 11-1. It just didn't make sense for Texas a &M to randomly get seven seven five-star recruits in one class. And you mean to tell me they're gonna get this outstanding recruiting class after going eight and four? Come on, man. I knew it was cap from day one and I told you guys this. And I already know people are running to the comments, oh Matt, you're jealous. I ain't jealous, just admit to it. Cause guess what, I hate to break the bad news to you. I don't care if Jimbo Fisher gets 10 five-star recruits every class. He's not gonna win a championship. He's not a great coach. I want some of you idiots out there to think about this. You upset Alabama last year, which is rare. You beat Bama, yet you still went eight and four. You're not gonna beat Bama every single year and it's gonna be far and few between. And the one year you beat them, you still have a sucky season. Here we go, I can smell them. I can smell them right now coming in. Well, Matt, we had a backup quarterback. The people who bring up the backup quarterback argument are the same ones talking about, oh, I don't care that Alabama's top wide receiver got hurt in the championship game. You gotta deal with it. Injuries happen. They're the same people. They're hypocrites. Go back to the videos. Y'all remember when Alabama lost to Georgia? I didn't even use that as an excuse. And I even predicted before the game that Georgia was going to win, so it's not like I was expecting Alabama to win. I never use injuries as an excuse because it's a part of the game and there's no reason to. Last but not least, before we end out this video, I want to read these two comments to you because I think they're great. This person stated, what's the issue? They will get paid if they come to play at Texas A&M. That's legal now. And somebody responded to that and said, not the way he said it, it's not. You can't promise NIL for guys if they come to play there, it's not allowed. That right there is the main point and what you have to understand. It's not about them getting paid, it's about the recruiter saying, we will pay you if you come here. You can't do that. So for all the people that are confused about this, that's the breakdown. You can't promise recruits, hey, if you come here, these boosters will pay you. You can't do that, my boy. Once again, do I care? Am I mad about it? Absolutely not. You wanna know why? <laughs> Cause here's why. As an Alabama fan, Texas A&M, they're not even on my mind. We want to and we compete for championships, so I wouldn't be worried about teams that also compete for championships, like Clemson, Ohio State, uh, maybe USC and Georgia. And also as an Alabama fan, and this is my humble opinion, we can agree to disagree, Texas A&M, they don't scare me, but you know who does? Auburn. You know why Auburn scares me? Because for some odd reason, the Iron Bowl is always close. It doesn't matter how bad or how good one of the teams is. Auburn scares me. LSU scares me. Georgia scares me. But Texas A&M doesn't. Out of all those teams, who's the one that beat us last year, though? That was A&M. So you may be sitting there asking, well, Matt, why don't you fear A&M? They beat you last. Oh, my bad, my bad. I'm talking about the regular season. Georgia did beat us in the championship. Congrats to them. It all goes back to this. Yeah, they beat us, but they went 8-4, and four, which proves that game was a fluke. Also, their quarterback, Zach Calzada, much respect to him. He played the game of his life. He'll never play that good again. It was also on their home field, a night game, and arguably one of the biggest games in that program's history. But you want to know the main difference between A&M and Alabama right now? That was the biggest game in history for them, but for Alabama... We don't even think about that game. That was just a regular season game. It didn't even matter. We don't care about a regular season game against Texas A&M, but for Texas A&M, Alabama's are Super Bowl. That's the difference between Nick Saban and Alabama and Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M. A&M and Jimbo is worried about Bama. Nick Saban and Alabama is worried about championships. You can take that information and do what you please with it. I don't care. I'm just here to tell you the facts. I'm going to end this video off right here. I don't want to make it too long, but I do want to get this out there. When it comes to football takes and sports takes, if Jimbo Fisher wants to say Nick Saban's a terrible coach, doesn't bother me. But here's what does bother me. When you take it outside of sports, and I will not forget what Jimbo Fisher said about Saban, and he attacked him personally. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to bring it up because we already made videos about it. He said some terrible things about Nick Saban two or three months ago, and I lost all respect I even had for uh, Jimbo Fisher. Although I didn't think he was a great coach, I did respect him. But now I don't respect him because he disrespected Nick Saban on a personal level. Even though you may not agree with what Saban said about Texas A&M, and it is true now, 
He didn't make it personal. That's all I got to say. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about down below. Bye, 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 bye.